Welcome back, Zero K fans. This is Shadow 3 again with another replay cast. Apparently, I've been being told that there are some issues with chat. People aren't able to actually chat, which is unusual. It really shouldn't be happening. I'm not sure why that's happening. But I. I haven't changed anything. I'm not sure if Hitbox has done something or if anyone who's on Twitch watching it has any issues chatting. So. Okay, Lowry is, able, Lowry is able to chat. Okay, so it's not. So it's not just... So it seems to be really specific. Okay, Twitch chat works. Just not... Just not hitbox. Well, that's annoying. Okay. Sorry about that. I don't know what is causing the problem, but I don't know if there's anything much I can do. That aside, let's get to the game. So like I said, Fell Dust Ramark on Bandit Plains, which is one of my favorite maps, or at least very similar to one of my favorite maps, which is Trojan Hills. Except Bandit Plains is larger, and only has a couple really viable starting locations. You can theoretically start along the entire bottom side, but it's only really worth starting over to the southeast, nor or south center, or north center and northwest. Because of the size of the map, it's kind of tricky to choose, because it's very hilly, so bots should be viable, but it's also very large, so vehicles would be more viable you'd think, but because it's very hilly, it's usually better to go for bots and just eat the fact that it's going to be hard to respond to anything quickly, or go for air or gunships, as Ryanmark is doing in this particular game. Let's see how that plays out. And yeah, click bot for Filthos. This should be interesting. The gunship plant opening is definitely a strong one, which hasn't actually been coming up recently. It's only been, well, been a few months, but yeah, the since the Brawler nerf, no one's really been going for gunships much anymore. They've been pretty unpopular. Air? Air start, that's been popular, but gunship start? There was that one match of the Rapiers that was in the tournament. Actually, Google Frog was, I believe it was Google Frog, who was using Rapiers to great effect. I think Rymark is, is patterning off of that, which is nice to see. I do quite like seeing gunship play. But it is going to be something that I'm sure Felthos is at least able to respond to. They already have a defender up, so they're not entirely unsure. I mean, the thing is, on this map, it's not unlikely for the opponent to go for air or gunship start, just because of the size. As we can see, this glaive, it's already been a minute, and that glaive was basically built from the start of the game. And it hasn't even reached Rymark's base. Yeah, it hasn't reached Rymark's base yet. Felthos has not scouted yet. Rymark also hasn't scouted, but that's merely because they haven't wanted to get... They don't want to give Failthouse the information that they have rapiers, that they have gone for the air start. They are... Well, yeah, they really aren't revealing it, but at the same time, this crane could... Okay, this crane is going up to build. Good, because I'm thinking, that crane needs to go off and build. That, that's what it has to do. Failthouse not scouting out. Failthouse doesn't even know. They have no idea what Rymark is up to. On the other hand, Rymark is similarly in the dark. They have even less knowledge. I mean, Failthos at least knows that Rymark isn't over to the west side of the map. Rymark doesn't even know where Failthos is. Hasn't even checked. I mean, they're going for a bit of a cheesy raid. Well, they're going for early rapiers. That's something that they might want to understand their opponent's target. I mean, they want to know where their opponent is so they can target it properly. I'm out of understanding. I don't know why I'm using that word. But yeah, they need to know where their opponent is what the best targets are. But yet, how do they give that away without revealing the rapiers? And I think what they're trying to do, I think what Rymark is trying to do is just get enough rapiers that it doesn't matter. By the time they come in, they'll have enough alpha strike damage that they can just deal with anything. And at this point, that may in fact work. Rymark doesn't have much resistance. Velthos hasn't built up a whole lot of defenses. Some, some lotuses, which are actually decently powerful against gunships compared to against planes. But otherwise, not much has been known. And Felthos, now they're going into the main base. Now they're going to spot it out. Rymark does not see that happening. Oh, will they see it happening? I don't know. Yes, they do see the glaive coming along, and Rymark's going to try to stop it. But they do not have the range. And it's... It's kind of too late, though. I mean, the, the real problem there, the real cost, is that Felthos now will know what Rymark is up to. Or, no, never mind. No, the, oh, the defender there. What am I thinking? No, they won't. They'll have no idea. There is this glaive, however, and that glaive can come in and can find out what's going on and can actually deal a bit of damage, too. 
Okay, so people are able to chat. Skazi is able to chat in both Hitbox and Twitch. I'm not really sure what was going on there. I'm not sure if Orphelius had the problem. Okay, so apparently it's possible to get the chat directly, and that will work. Awesome. So there is a solution for Hitbox, for those of you watching. And hopefully this won't be a problem in the future. Hitbox occasionally has weird intermittent issues. One of the problems with it. I don't know. I, I really don't know. Hitbox gets weird sometimes. But like I said, now broadcasting to both Hitbox and Twitch simultaneously, so if you prefer Twitch, you can watch on Twitch. If you prefer Hitbox, you can watch on Hitbox. This is basically the final test stream before I make that totally official, but the other two test streams have gone so well that I'm fairly certain that it'll work fine. Right, watching, the, watching the VOD playback has just been wonderful. Very, very refreshing. I mean, I was worried that it would have choppiness. I had choppiness originally, I mentioned that earlier, but yeah, I basically had choppiness because Windows is a little weird about its send window. I'll get back to that in a second, though. Failthos, they still are scouting around. They're scouting around over the west side of the map. They haven't scouted to the south, and at this point, they should know what Rymark is up to, because this glaive was here, but I think that glaive did not... I should have checked while I was going. I'm pretty sure that glaive did spot... Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, they totally know. Rymark is well aware of the rapiers coming in. They've been building a lot of gremlins. They've gone pretty much mass gremlin. While Brawler and Conch... Whoa, that's... Ten conches. So entirely focusing on gunships for offense and amphib for... Which is sensible for building. I mean, 7.5 metal per second on a bot on a map like this makes perfect sense. Although, admittedly, it is rather slow. I'm not sure if it's that much slower than other workers. I mean, it looks like they're not even trying to move around with them too much. 51 element per second compared to... Oh, that's Gremlin. Wherever that is. There it is. Compared to... Okay, it's not that bad. 51 elements compared to 57 elements per second. That's about the same. So it's not much slower. And Glaives coming in along to the north. That will be stopped very quickly. Rymark, nice and spread out. They do have... I mean, they are taking advantage of the fact that gunships allow them very fast response times anywhere across the map. And everyone on Hitbox testing, your tests are successful. You can... You're, the tests are good. You're good. You don't have to worry about it too much. Anyway, Rymark continuing to expand quite nicely. Fell with us way behind, too. 23 to 31. Part of that apparently being reclaimed, but not much. And Razor coming in here to try to stop any direct attacks, but I think at this point Rymark is much more focused on expanding on their own. They're focused on setting up, I mean, now they're revealed to have the Amphibs, so at this point, I think Failthos, they've already switched over to ground forces, they I think they have enough, and they do have enough gremlins to deal with everything. I think at this point, the gunships are being used for pressure, they're being used just to make sure that they have something to deal with, well, both deal with their opponent's pressure and also to apply pressure on their own. But now the Amphibs are going to be the main assault force. Which makes a lot of sense, Failthos invested a lot in anti-air, they're still building that Razor, they have quite a bit of anti-ground in that base. And the duck's coming in to get rid of those gremlins because, well, try to at least. I mean, it's a few shots. Gremlins have, what, 550 health. It has three shots to kill them. And like I said, ground forces are being built up. Zeus, Glaive, Warrior. These ducks will have a decent chance of getting out of here alive, but they're gonna have a harder time attacking directly. Gotta be very careful. I mean, that duck there is dead. The other half dozen, I mean, there, there's half a dozen ducks here. That could get rid of these warriors without too much issue. And the warriors only have, that's like, four shots worth of health. Along with the brawler support, though, admittedly, that's not the best position due to all the gremlins that really... Brawlers die to gremlins, that was the nerf! It's that gremlins can outrange brawlers, no problem. Although, that's a very nice bait. Letting those ducks come in here, great baiting here. This is... This is Rymark really pushing in, I mean, that... That was a nice switch from Rymark. They predicted, which, I mean, it's a pretty easy prediction that Felthos would go heavy anti-air. Felthos went really heavy in the anti-air, though. I mean, it had... Well, it was about a dozen gremlins when it came down to it. And that was only for, like, three rapiers and a brawler. That... That's basically been it. There's been cranes here and there, but... These three rapiers were built at the start of the game, and no further replacements have been made. So Rymark really mixed up Felthos, and it's just... Just coasting on it at this point. Although, admittedly, they're not really coasting. They're building up. They're expanding. They're setting up cranes everywhere. 
they're using the Brawlers and Rapiers more as defense than offense. Which makes a lot of sense, given the fact that the anti-air is going to be used as defense as well, so Rymar can basically just use them. They can use their own air force, because by the time anything attacks, it's not going to have gremlin support, most likely. Anyway, as I was saying, so the problem was that apparently Microsoft has, for every version of Windows before 8, set up where, I think it's the TCP send window, is restricted to 8 kilobytes per second. Or 8 kilobytes, so I guess per stream packet, not sure, not sure if it's TCP or UDP. Anyway, if you set that up to 64 kilobytes, then Nginx, which is what I'm using to split the stream, will work fine. This is done by default on Windows 8 and later, so most of the people who are making guides about Nginx must have been using Windows 8 and later. But if you're using Windows 7 or earlier, as I am, then it ends up being problematic until you go into regit and actually fix the problem once you find out what the problem is. Having done that, I now have the dual stream, which is really, really, really nice. And now, Ducks nicely flying in the Warriors. Ducks and Boys, good choice here. The Boys are the better counter to the Zeus than the Ducks are. But that slow does give the Ducks more time to actually deal with the damage they need to. If they even get into range to do so. It's still kind of tricky. Really, the Boys are the counter, but they, that's what I mean. They're the counter, they're working. They're getting rid of one of the Zeus, no problem. The other Zeus able to get away. But that's still more territory for Rymark. That's still more room for Rymark to move around. Rymark still has the military advantage. They still have an economic advantage. They're just pumping out boys and ducks and... No, boy, gins. Well, boys and conches, I mean, but there's a gin coming as well. This we do not see very frequently. In fact, I've never seen a gin in any of my casts, I don't think. They have a characteristic sound to them that I don't recall hearing in a cast. I've seen them once just spectating a game. Yeah, that is going to be unusual. So at this point, Felthos trying to figure out where, what to do here. They know about the Brawler and actually are in a great position to, well, push it away. Probably not kill it, but you know what? Maybe. No, 11.26. No, that wasn't going to kill it. However, Rymark, they have this half of the map. That's all they know. Sorry, Felthos is at that half of them. Rymark, not a whole lot of radar, but a lot of scouting around with line of sight. The Ducks and Boys just using them to get an idea of where Felthos is set up. But Felthos coming in with a scout. Making it difficult for Rymark to get around easily, especially with the boys. Some ducks around there would have been very handy, but unfortunately the only duck left is about to die to a Zeus. Mind you that Zeus is going to die in return, but that's not really relevant. As Razors have been set up, I mean, Feldas has been still setting up a lot of anti-air. That brawler has been a pain. Going back, getting repaired, coming forward. It's been the only brawler built up, and we also have a spider switch for mass fleas for Rymark. Feldas just now switching to air. Adding a few bombers of their own, but otherwise, yeah, they're trying to get rid of the boys somewhat. But there is so much power in anti-air that Amphib has. There's so much power in anti-air that Spider has, though Spider's going to be used for Crab instead. Just to try to finish this off. Going for Spider Switch just to get that artillery, just to punch through everything. And also for the fleas for extra scouting. I mean, Rymark at this point, they are going to... If they don't know now, they're very soon going to know exactly what's going on in Felthos' territory almost entirely. Also getting rid of those gremlins very cleverly. I mean, the fleas, they can bump into the gremlins, no problem. They hit the gremlins, they kill the gremlins, because the gremlins can't hit back. While at the same time, Rymark's just assaulting on all fronts. Getting rid of these defenses with the boys, just from range. Getting rid of the area to the south. I mean, there is the sniper. The sharpshooter has been built up, but it looks like... Why is that not cloaked? Oh, that, that is cloaked. I'm not sure why that's... Okay, that's bizarre that it's not... Okay, why is it not appearing cloaked properly? Strange. Hey, it should be this transparent effect, but anyway, yeah, that sharpshooter is in fact cloaked. It may not look it, but it is. At the same time, Rymark able to get rid of the east side of the map. They don't have any of their cranes nearby to build up, but they... That's close enough, actually. Building up wind generators, so they could easily take over this section to the east. They will have to get rid of these last few Rockos, though. I mean, Felthos being very fierce about taking that to east. Can't take the west side, though. That's fairly well protected. Although, there are some... No, the, never mind. The Stinger is way too strong. The Stinger just prevents that. I think Rymark might... Might have to worry about air units coming into the west side of the map. But no, Felthos is actually attacking directly with a bunch of ground units. Trying to defend the eastern side of the map. Rockos versus boys. This is actually going to be a win for the Rockos. The Rockos do a much better job dealing with boys than the other way around. Over to the center of the map, however... Brawler is still trying to get rid of what they can of both the Gremlins and just everything on the ground. And once again, the Ducks, they are, I mean, the 
that's the thing. The ducks are the hook. The brawler's the bait. And those gremlins have been caught out. All of, oh no, not quite all of them gonna die? All of them gonna die. They are all gonna die. So at this point, I don't think there are any gremlins left. Yeah, this this is not going well. The boys actually have taken care of quite a few of the Rockos, and over the center of the map... How many fleas are there? 45 fleas just rushing forward. This is actually gonna work really well against... only against the Rockos, not against anything else. But at the same time, that crab is still being very dangerous. Though it's in a terrible position. Rymark should probably pull that crab in further. At the same time, though, the center of the map is only being taken by fleas, which... the warrior can deal with no problem. I mean, everything else, the sharpshooter is about to die. Which is rather unfortunate, that's a very expensive... I mean, that was worth it. That was totally worth it. 45 fleas, that was what? 900... 900 metal to get rid of... 900 metal just in the sharpshooter, let alone all the Rockos that were killed. And here we see where the gunships pay off. Going back to that with a dozen rapiers, because all the anti-air has basically been removed, except for some of these defenders. But otherwise, the anti-air has been removed. Some air-based anti-air coming in here in the form of Hawks for Failthos, but at this point it's probably too little too late. One or two Hawks will not work against rapiers. Against Banshees, yes. Against rapiers, no. The rapiers are Flex AA. I guess a single Hawk, they will just... The Alpha Strike damage will be enough to kill them. And the Hawk will just go down. Like, the defenders aren't even that big of a threat. That's just how much power they have. And yeah, that Hawk... Actually, not bad timing, though. The Rapiers are getting kind of busy hitting everything, so the Hawks do have a bit of a chance. But even then, not much of one. Like I said, the Rapiers just take care of them. Getting rid of everything in the main base, I think this is going to be game. I think Feldas is going to throw in the towel. Looks like they're doing one last charge. Try to get what they can, but the Grizzly in the back is going to stop that, and that will be game. Air Factory down. Cloaky Factory about to go down. The Oh, Commander down as well. Sorry, that's Commander down in the Gear Factory. Yeah, the Commander's gone down, and with that, Failthos throws in the towel, realizing that Rymark has taken way too much of the map. Well done, Rymark. That was... That was a good set of switches there. Very good set of factory switches, and good use... Well, good retreating, really. That was the big thing. Retreating those Rapiers so they could be used later on. Retreating the Brawler so you only had to build one. And they're getting the Amphibs in the back as that happened. A little bit of a slow start, but that worked out nicely. And yeah, Laura pointing out in the chat that Felthos didn't really capitalize on the weaknesses, and no they didn't. They didn't even check for the start. They didn't even go into the base to see what was done. Had they seen that, they probably would have, well, mass expanded, because that's something that's difficult to deal with, and probably would have also just rushed in with Glaives. I mean, Banshees would have been a bit of a threat, but everything else, like the Brawler would have taken too long to build up, so I think... Except for the fact that it is a large map, so rushing with Glaives is difficult. It would have been a bit of an all-or-nothing thing, but... Well, all or not quite as much. There would still have been a chance to defend, especially with defenders in the base. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. I'll have another one for you guys in just a moment. It will be... What will it be? It'll be Kloon and Lori on Titan Duel. This is a bit of a longer game, so get your popcorn and sit back, and we'll start that in just a moment. <laughs> 